at St Paul's Church in Covent Garden with Father Simon. Can you tell us a little bit of the history about the church? Yeah, well St Paul's Church in Covent Garden was built um, by the architect Inigo Jones in 1633. And the Duke of Bedford, who was building the whole area, um, realised he needed a church, um, but he didn't want to spend a lot of money. In fact, said to Inigo Jones, I wouldn't really have it any better than a barn. And Inigo Jones said, then you shall have the handsomest barn in England. So there it is, the handsomest barn in England, so they say. But then in the 1660s, after the restoration of the monarchy, Charles II um, licensed theatre companies in this parish and so that's how we became the Actors Church. So we've been the Actors Church since the 1660s, so well over 300 years now. What is it that brings theatre companies and actors to this particular space, do you think? Well I think now it's, it, it, it obviously has this tradition, it has this great history as the Actors Church and if you look around there's all the memorials to some of the great actors of, of, of history really. Um, we've got Ellen Terry's Ashes are buried here, Edith Evans, you know we've got memorial plaques to uh, all sorts of people's Vivian Lee, uh, Hattie Jakes, Richard Beckinsale, so it's amazing. But also of course although we're a church we're also um, a working theatre. We must be one of the few uh, churches that actually has star dressing rooms and chorus dressing rooms and a stage and lighting rig and sound rig and all that sort of thing. I've been to the dressing rooms, they're lovely. Well, they, uh, several people have been kind enough to say actually they're nicer than some of the West End dressing rooms, you know, because <laughs> we only did them a few years ago, so they are very modern and uh, nice, and we've got loos and showers and all that sort of thing, so. Yes, because for you, I guess, being part of the church that does put on theatre companies must be brilliant because you have a background in that child actor. I was a child actor and I, yeah, and I trained in theatre and, and did theatre and, until, until I was ordained. But So yes, it, it's, it's obviously it's very exciting. There is a constant sort of, you know, balancing act to be had because obviously the, the needs of the church come first, but then trying, particularly, we, we say we have, one of our, our, our sort of missions is to, is to reach out particularly to emerging artists. So we try to do that and, and encourage, you know, younger performers. And and sometimes there's, there's a little bit of tension there to, 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 to keep the, those in balance, but we, we try to do that. There are things that, that you know, we wouldn't feel are appropriate here, but I think the challenges are more technical. I mean, it's an incredibly easy building to sing in, for example. It's not wildly good for naturalistic speech. It's very good for poetic speech, very good for Shakespeare. But something epic, Brecht works quite well here. Verse drama, we've had a murder in the cathedral here. Um, Archbishop Rowan came and, and saw that, which was quite funny because he saw his namesake actually being murdered in the <laughs> church, so that was quite fun. Um, so it works well for all those sorts of things, but a sort of a naturalistic sort of forehand play probably wouldn't work here. Obviously, we do a lot of music, a lot of concerts as well. Because mm. I came to see Midsummer Night's Dream that you had on uh, a few months ago outside, and you have such beautiful, beautiful grounds. I mean, it's not just the church; it's everything. People call it one of sort of London's hidden secrets, really, because we've got these really quite large grounds, which which obviously were 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 the graveyard originally. I mean, I think actually that the very walking through the grounds is actually quite healing. I think a lot of people find gardens quite healing anyway. So you come in and by the time you kind of reach the door of the church, I, th I think the, the busyness of the world has tended to still a little and then you come in and you know we, we have places where people can light candles or can just sit and be quiet so that we try to have quite a peaceful atmosphere. And so Iris Theatre, which is our in-house theatre company, that when they do their summer show, that tends to be a promenade production in the garden and then it comes into the church for the, the, the sort of climax. So yes, it was Midsummer Night's Dream this summer. I do wander everywhere the land on
that was that was great fun and and we did very well and um, we had some nice reviews and uh, Time Out gave us four stars, which was wow. exciting. That's fantastic. Uh, another one of your interests that we had, you tried to, you like to try to keep fit. What advice would you give to people that would like to try and keep their mind and physically healthy? It's all about balance, isn't it? You know, uh, in every day, if you sort of try and think of something for the body, something for the mind, something for the spirit, you know, that the, the Christian tradition is very much of, of daily prayer, so that, you know, you start the day uh, or end the day or both, you know, with prayer, to something for the spirit, something for the mind, you know, some, some, t some time out from work, perhaps some reading, whatever. And also, yeah, the, because we, we are... We are body and spirit united, so if you, you, you can't neglect your body. And so, you know, sort of, yeah, I, I, I work out a bit, I go to the gym, because I think if you, if you keep your body healthy, your mind and your spirit are also likely to be healthy, and vice versa. It's all about balance, it's all about harmony. I mean, it's something that Inigo Jones knew about, because this whole building is actually speaks of harmony and balance. And, and, and if we can reflect that in our own lives, that, that's, quite, that's quite good. So this church obviously costs a lot of money to run every day because you don't get any kind of state funding or anything like that. No, I think a lot of people think that churches are, are, are funded by the state, by the government, but they're not, of course. It costs over £600 a day to keep this place open. We obviously rely on, on the generosity of our worshipping uh, community and people who come in to use the church for, for shows or memorial services, all of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a challenge, particularly uh, at the moment, you know, uh, people are going through a tough time, and we've noticed that, you know, our, our donations box is not is not quite as full as it used to be. I think people people are struggling. The Church of England owns over half the listed buildings in the country. I mean, this is Grade One listed, obviously, and you know that, that's a, a tremendous responsibility to maintain. And and yeah, it's very tough. What shows do you have coming up, or what events do you have coming up? Uh, the church. Well, we've got a, a series of concerts coming up. Um, we've got a, a one-night sort of a, um, a musical theatre project of trying to develop new writers of musical theatre, and also some. Uh, we've got a poetry uh, event coming up. We've got another event for the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible in October, and then we've got obviously our 26 carol services in December. That must keep you very busy. <laughs> it's pretty full on. <laughs> We, we try and be open every day of the year. We, obviously, we do close for maintenance or get-ins or, or during shows, but, but we try to be open most of the time. So just come along. Just pop in. Well, thank you very much for talking with me today. Well, thank you for coming. It's really good to spend some time and uh, do have a look round.